Yo, what's good y'all, so Trail Lane. Really, I don't like doing these type of videos because these results never really translate to the real world usage, but this one got me pretty interested, man, not gonna lie. So basically, here's what's going down. So I got the Galaxy Book S right here, and if you don't know already, this isn't your typical laptop, ultra book, whatever you want to call it. This is one of those Windows on ARM PCs with a Snapdragon 8CX compute platform chip, and then I also got my Galaxy S20 Ultra right here with a Snapdragon 865. And as far as I know, these processors are basically the same, but I want to go and see what results do we get on a laptop versus a phone that's something i really want to see about so let's go and get into this hey. all right so yeah you know the whole windows on arm thing already you know we have the surface pro x which i heard ain't really that good to be honest with you like i heard about the bad battery life and everything like that but i got a galaxy book s over here on the verizon service and i've been liking this thing the only problem is and it ain't changed from the surface pro x is the apps you know the apps don't really got that much compatibility on here yet it still needs some work but i pretty much got like the basics here like chrome and galaxy buds manager i got microsoft edge i got smart switch you know stuff like that but like i was telling y'all the processors in these things ain't supposed to be that much different and this is not like this is going to be a straight up cp CPU to CPU comparison like we're going to be comparing Android and Windows real quick and see how the optimization is. So that's why I'm here and I don't think anybody did this yet. So I got these things pretty similar like this has a 1080p screen and I have this on 1080p right now so I'll go over here to the display and you can see right there it's on 1080p. Just in case 1440p messes with the performance, I just equaled out the screens. But all right, let's go and actually start off by looking at what we got side by side here. I mean, even look at the base frequency area and over here where it says cluster three, they're both at 2.84 gigahertz. Now there's gonna be some differences, like this has 12 gigs of RAM and this has eight gigs of RAM, but still, I think this is gonna be a pretty fun comparison, man. So that's pretty much it. Let's just go and get into this benchmark real quick. And I'm gonna do some real hood here. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my Galaxy Tab S6 book cover keyboard stand here because I don't got a stand here for my Galaxy S20 Ultra. And I'm gonna use this as the stand. It is what it is. All right, so that looks good enough. That's hood hacks right there. So we're gonna go and start this at the same time to see which one finishes first, and we're gonna go and start it now. So I'm gonna go and fast forward through all this, and then I'll just go and get back to y'all when these both finish. So let's go and do it. All right, definitely screwed that up. So let's go and do this now. All right, so we're all done here, and you can see here that my hood hack obviously didn't work. But wow, okay then, so we're actually getting faster performance on the Galaxy S20 Ultra. Okay, yeah, so that's pretty interesting. So we got 699 here for the single core score, and then we got 917 for the single core score on the S20 Ultra. 2723 multi-core score for the Galaxy Book, and then we got 3310 for the Galaxy S20 Ultra. And both of these are updated all the way. There's no performance boost turned on or nothing. That's actually pretty interesting. All right, man. So let's go and look over everything real quick. So you can see all my system information right here, like Android 10, Galaxy S20 Ultra 5G, the model ID and everything. And that was actually wrong. So both of these actually have eight cores on here. I guess I just looked at that and automatically assumed it had four cores. We show eight gigs here and 10 gigs here. You can see all the single core performance scores and everything right there. And if I go ahead and put that side by side, there we go. You can go and see all the single core performance scores right there. So you can go and pause that and read for yourself if you want. But I'm gonna go and continue right here. So let's go and scroll down some more and you can just keep pausing every time I get to the bottom of the list or something. So there we go. You can go and check those out right there. We got the multi-core performance for both of them. And then now we're just here at the bottom of the multi-core performance screen. Galaxy Book S versus Galaxy S20 Ultra. The S20 Ultra is faster. I did not expect that to be honest with y'all. Like I thought the Galaxy Book S was gonna be faster, but I guess not. Galaxy S20 Ultra beats Galaxy Book S. Your phone is faster than your laptop now. But that's why I'm gonna go and cut it, y'all. So thanks for watching. If you like this video, go and give this video a like. And if you really liked it, go and subscribe. But go and follow me on my social media, Eddiecent Tech on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook, but I'm most active on Instagram and Twitter. And thanks for watching. I'll see y'all on the next one. This is pretty fun, man. Go and let me know if I should go and do more of these. But yeah, so thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. And stay safe, stay inside. You already know that. And um, yeah. Okay, peace out.
And just for fun, I thought I'd throw in the Galaxy Z Flip Snapdragon A55 Plus with its 8 gigs of RAM just like the Galaxy Book S. And it looks like the single core score is actually lower on the Galaxy Book S, but the multi-core score is actually higher, so that's pretty interesting. And then you can see right here, they both still have 8 cores and everything, like nothing changed there. 